Hey, what's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road. Man, I gotta just tell you, the reason why I have a RV or a camper trailer is because of, this country is beautiful. I've actually cross country traveled in a, some type of RV or another trailer motorhome many, many times. I, I think I've been across country now going on maybe, I think I've gone about 20 times, somewhere in between 15 and 20 times across the entire country, from Florida to Utah, from New York I, I, to Utah. So I guess that's not across the entire country, but I've also RV'd into California too. So I've, I've been to 44 of the, no, sorry, 46 of the 50 states. I'm missing like those, those dang states in the middle, like Arkansas and Oklahoma. There's no highways that like are convenient to drive through. Rhode Island and North Dakota. That's it, right there, there's four. So we've been, I, I've been in, and that's in an RV. I've traveled the country in an RV. But hey, today, this is a rant, by the way. This is our Thursday rant. And I wanted to talk to you today about, well, why you should not live in an RV. I mentioned that I was going to rant on this last week, so here it is. Now, let me make a disclaimer to you. I have traveled all over in an RV. I've already told you that. And that, that amount of travel is probably equates to somewhere in between probably six months worth of traveling and which would be kind of like living in an RV, at least short term. Um, outside of that, I have lived probably around three to three and a half years in an RV, in some sort of RV or another. Growing up, we lived in a fifth wheel at one point while we were building a home. I actually lived in a fifth wheel in 1994 during one of the record snowstorms of Utah. In the valley, we had four feet of snow. We're at like 10,000 feet right now. We probably have five feet of snow in here, up here. But in the valley, that's not very common. <laughs> like to have a foot of snow is pretty cool. Uh, four feet of snow in 94, and we lived an entire, through the entire winter in a fifth wheel travel trailer RV. So um, I, I, when I say don't live in an RV, I, I, I just, what it is I really want to do is set an expectation for you. Because I don't want, I, a lot of people have a dream to live in an RV and remote living, right? Like you can work remote now. So you want to live in and travel in an RV or a, or a, or a motor home or, a, you know, whatever, a van life. And so I, I shouldn't say don't live in one is because a lot of our uh, customers or roamers that buy stuff from us, they do live in them. And that's totally 100% acceptable. But let me set some expectations for you. And, and that's kind of why I wanted to say don't live in one just to kind of sh ho hopefully shock you into watching this video so that I can set some expectations for you. Because you can live in one long term, like for the rest of your life is probably not a good idea. People do. I mean, there's RV parks, people live in RVs their whole life, three to four years of my life is a long time and I do have some experience on it, but let me tell you some of the expectations you have to have if you do decide that you're going to live full-time in an RV. Number one, they're not designed like homes. The quality is not as good as most houses. Now houses are all over the place. It depends on who built it and where it was built and how much they built it for, right? So houses can vary in quality across the board. But the difference between a house is generally it stays in one spot. It never moves, right? Unless there's an earthquake. And guess what happens if there's a 2.3 point, 4 point, 5 .0 earthquake. Well, potentially if there's a 4 or 5.0 earthquake, your house could crumble to the ground. So an RV, every time you hook it up and you drive it somewhere, it's going through an earthquake. Like if you think nothing in your house would shift or break or a cabinet wouldn't come off the track or a screw wouldn't come loose or a door wouldn't like get jammed after your house goes through a three or four point earthquake, wouldn't that be a silly, silly thing to think? Like you, if you didn't think anything would happen, that's kind of absurd, right? Well, that's what a trailer is. A trailer is, is a house that's set on wheels and it's getting vibrated down the freeway. And the fact that they don't completely fall apart is actually pretty miraculous. Uh, they're designed to go on the road, right? They're designed to travel down the road. 
But, but I just like to tell people, listen, a lot of the stuff in trailers, like the plumbing is the same plumbing in your house. A lot of the hinges and the cabinetry is the same. I mean, they use paneling in the cabinets, the same paneling that you can buy at Home Depot, right? One of the things is I just, you gotta have the expectation that this is a house that's going through an earthquake every time I move it. You take it off road, holy moly, you're talking 5.0 earthquake. Now, luckily here at ROA, our trailers have independent suspension, which is gonna uh, take a lot of the impact, a lot of that vibration, it's gonna go down into the suspension. And so it's gonna last longer and and hold up to those, those rigorous off-road terrains more than anything else. Most standard trailers are on solid axles and leaf springs, which is just a stiff ride and it's just shaken to death. Now, let me tell you something very, very interesting. And this is telling to everybody that's looking to buy a trailer. There is a seal, it's called the RVIA and that's the RV industry, RVIA, RV, RV in, uh, industry association. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm having a moment there. It's kind of like the standard. It's like the code, right? You you apply for it, you get into it and and then they'll, they'll, they'll come into the manufacturer and they'll throw this on there and they say this meets code plumbing and electrical yada 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 uh yada 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 whatever you however you say it tomato tomato and they'll tell you this is approved by the rvia and rvia for the longest time just said this is approved and they would tell you it meets all the standards rvia on all the new models coming out this year go and take a look at the stamp it now they just made a disclaimer that says this is not this is a recreational vehicle and it is made for temporary use or recreation. It is not designed or made to live in full time. That's very telling. And the reason why, I'll tell you the reason why they've done that because I have been seeing a lot of these things happen in the industry. A lot of consumers with all of this live van life or you know you can work remote get an rv and go live in it what's happened is people are taking them out and they're living in it and things are breaking obviously right it's an earthquake down the road and and so all of a sudden these people are going to the manufacturers and saying you need to warranty this it has a year warranty and you need to fix everything and the manufacturers are looking into it and saying no this is a recreational vehicle and it's designed to recreate so now an rv manufacturer is going to look at your warranty claim and it, if it's excessive they're going to look at it and they're going to say hey we think you're living in it and if you live in it the warranty is void done sorry and 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 that's not just one manufacturer that's all of the manufacturers. Now you can get some things slid in, but if you keep on coming back and it's excessive, what they start to say is this is not designed to live in. This is designed to use one to two months of the year. If you live in it for a year, that's equivalent to 10 to 20 years of use. So there's been lawsuits going out and, and guess what? Unfortunately, most of the consumers and the clients are losing these lawsuits because like, the manufacturer says this is a recreational vehicle it's not a house and i've never claimed it was a house it's called an rv right recreational vehicle and these people are living in it as a matter of fact a lot of banks won't give loans on the trailers if you tell them that i'm going to live in it because they say well you're gonna it's going to be excessive use and that's going to devalue it and we're going to put a lien on it and plus you can move it to another state and we can find you so there's a lot of reasons why they do that but uh, this is might be news to you if you're new in the industry if you're looking what i want to say to you is listen if you it, it, people live in them all the time and they take it to their dealers and the dealers will do the warranty and 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 pretty much most of the time all the warranty gets approved. The manufacturers want to take care of you. Our manufacturers are phenomenal. They really want to take care of. And typically our manufacturers are like, hey, let's make the people happy and let's get everything fixed. But there comes a point where if it's excessive, you got to understand that you might get you you might get declined right we we're not into that type of mentality we don't want to decline anybody for anything now if there's something faulty that's like clearly this is a manufacturer defect they need to fix it we will fix it and we'll take care of our people especially roa we're fanatics about our roamers the people that buy trailers from us we we love on them we we do adventures we do rallies so if we're not taking care of you we don't want to see you at the rally right that wouldn't be right of us and, and that's not how we are so we take care of our people but i i just want people to have an understanding and an expectation if you're going to live in one understand there's going to be issues 
and you just need to fix most of them. This is the biggest thing. Like you take out your trailer the first time and things are broken. That's absurd. All of that stuff should be under warranty. Like obviously, right? If you take it out and something, the roof, like there's caves in, like oh, obviously that's a, that's a lawsuit and you're going to win it, right? So I mean like to me, hopefully it's not a lawsuit. Hopefully you take it into the manufacturer and say the roof fell in and they, they, they make you whole. It's because that's what a good company would do. But the point is be somewhat reasonable because we see people in the industry, people getting into this because they want to live in it and that's technically not what they're designed for now remember i've lived in one for three to four years of my life traveled all over the country and i plan to probably put another couple years of my life in an rv of some sort i i, I you know i te i tell my wife we used to dream about a cabin or a dream about a beach house and we don't dream about that anymore because we have an rv and and, and so to me it's like honey let's go to the mountains in our cabin on wheels we can go up into the mountains hey let's go down to the beach we've been down to baja and camped right on the ocean right i mean you've got to pay a million dollars for a beach house we got an rv that we roll in and we stay for a week and we leave and then and then in the summer we go to the mountains and have our cabin on wheels so you know like i like i said i plan to spend a lot more days months and even years before my life is over in an rv and i probably will live full time for a year or two here and there in the next you know <laughs> 40 years of my life or 50 or 100 years depending on how long I live um, but I, I love RVing I, I think I, I would recommend yeah go live in it if that's what you want to do if you want to see the country if you want to explore and you want to create these beautiful memories some of my greatest memories as a child were actually in the RV um, some of my favorite memories even as an adult with my family has been in the RV because there's something special about it where you get out you're disconnected from things and even if you're traveling across the country you, you're just, you know, you're doing new things and there's variety happening in your life and it really opens up your, your, your mind and your life to new experiences and, and it's really beautiful. And so I recommend it for everybody, but I just want to set some expectations. Thank you so much for watching this rant. They come out every single Thursday. You can uh, click to subscribe to see the next ones coming out or you can go to our playlist and see our other ones. We always have new stuff coming out almost every single day, it feels like lately. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.